Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in my modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at the standard template library, the algorithms, and specifically the min and max operations. Today, looking at one that's very important known as clamp. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about clamp for a little bit here, but let's go ahead and navigate here in the algorithms library on CPP reference. If I scroll way down here to our uh, minimum and maximum operations, you'll see the last one that we haven't covered here is clamp here, which was introduced in C++17. Now, this is a really interesting operation, especially if you've done stuff in like image processing, for instance, you've probably written your own clamp function. But this, of course, could be used for any sort of data processing. You're allowed to pass in a comparator here so you can compare if some value is less than or greater than some other value here. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this function here. And we have a const expert function as well in C17. Or rather, I should say both of these are in fact const expert. So you could do some of this work potentially at compile time. But the basic idea is what we're saying is if v compares less to low, it returns the low value. Otherwise, if it's uh, higher than the high value, it returns the high value. Otherwise, you get back the value v. So one way to think about this, and I'll go ahead and just draw this out here, is if I go ahead and draw out a really quick number line here, let's just say I have some values here, like 0, 1, and 2, negative 1, and 2. So this is obviously my low value here for some range here, and this is my high value. And if I want to place a, another value here, like negative 3, let's label this appropriate, well, it's just going to clamp to this lower value here. Okay, so it's not part of my number line. Likewise, if I have a number like 4000 here, which would be somewhere later on, um, it's going to clamp to this value too, right over here. Okay, so some other value. And then anything else that falls here, let's say I have some other value, negative 1.5, well, it remains unchanged. That's within our range of values here. Okay, so it's not really normalizing or doing anything with the values, but just clamping them in uh, some range here. So those are the boundaries. Okay, so I hope that sort of uh, visualizes what's going on here. There you can see the whole little number line here. And you can think about if you have different types of objects that have different types of values, but again, the low and the max ranges. Again, if you have a struct with multiple values, you have to write the comparator for that. But the point is that you can, and you could just use the functionality here found in the standard template library here. Okay, so uh, that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead and play around with this. They've provided a nice example with uh, types here, but I want to go ahead and start uh, playing around with it and just asking some questions. Um, and it's a good review of the different uh, type signatures here, right? So we're passing in some const value here uh, for all of these and then returning uh, some other value here. Okay, so let's sort of look at what that means in code here. Uh, let's go ahead and just start with some integers here. Let's go ahead and give myself a uh, value say it is 255. And then I want to uh, do a clamp. And the range is going to be, well, the value that I put in here, 0 and 255. Uh, and let's go ahead and see a few different things here. Let's first just print it out here. And then I want to uh, go ahead and say the uh, value uh, before. And let's go ahead and put the value and the value after. OK, just so it's uh, clear what's going on here and what's being returned here. OK, um, so let's go ahead and run this a few different times and see what our results are. I'm going to use C++ uh, 20 here. We need at least 17 for this particular function here. So it compiles, uh, no problem. Uh, and actually, I was able to get away with not even including the algorithm library here. Uh, although we probably should. Looks like this might have been included by default, or maybe it's actually used in IO stream. I don't know here, but let's go ahead and make sure that we include algorithm. And let's actually, on successful compile, let's run our program. And it is running just fine here. So as expected, 255 meets our range. So um, it is uh, as expected here. Now let's go ahead and put it outside of our range here. So let's increment this to 256. Try to run this and compile it. And again, the value before 255, uh, or 256, excuse me, when we clamp it, it is 255. And the uh, value, oops, let's do our uh, after, is indeed still 256 here. Okay, so something important to consider here when I'm just running this function and evaluating it is it's not being modified. Okay, 
when I'm passing it inside of this function here, right? The value is the same after, uh, right? This is unchanged here. And if we look at the type signature here, which again, uh, right, this is a, a const value here. Now we are returning something here. Uh, so let's see what happens if we try to uh, return our value. Okay, so let's say value equals standard clamp value 0 to 55. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just pass this in. And then I'll go ahead and run this here. The value before 255. Uh, this is the value as we print it off, and then the value after. Okay, we get a value of 255 because we have reassigned uh, this actual value here. Okay, because it returns and we overwrite the value there. So I think that's often the behavior that you might want, again, if you're cleaning up your data. But again, you need to consider too if you want to preserve your original values. Okay, so where might we use this? Uh, let's go ahead and do a little... Uh, function here. I'm just going to call it cleanup here. And we're going to pass in a vector of ints here. Okay. Uh, actually, let's, let's do unsigned char. Uh, and I'm just going to say the data here. And what I'm going to do here for each of our data here uh, that we pass in. Now, I could do this with a range based loop, but I need to make sure that I pass things by reference. So let's actually practice that. So auto uh, and uh, we're just going to say value in our data. And I want to basically reassign the values to this range here. Okay, so let's go ahead and maybe do something like this. Let's just copy what we had uh, previously. Okay, and we want to clamp it within some range here. Now I might want to actually pass in some parameters here, but let's assume that we have a range of 0 to 255 uh, for our unsigned char. Now, interestingly, on the CPP reference page, if you look at their example, they do this with the different uh, types here, like int 8 uh, min and int 8 uh, max or u int 8 max. In fact, that's probably a little bit better. Let's use u int 8 max here. Uh, let's actually copy that. In my C series, well, the videos that I did was on the fix with types here. So we need to add the C uh, fix with types here. So let's go ahead and do that just to show our intent. So it's C standard. Uh, library, I believe those are in. Uh, yep, that does the trick here. Okay, um, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, compile, make sure we haven't made any silly mistakes. Oops, looks like I have, of course. Um, let's see. Oh, maybe this is going to fight me. Let's just do it with a uh, regular for loop. I think that's just as explicit. That's fine. <laughs> um, let's see here. For our collection size uh, equals zero i less than data size i plus plus and then we can explicitly see what's going on um this is probably actually a great example we haven't covered um anything as far as uh parallelism goes here but you know this is probably a very parallel example <laughs> that we might want to do um and i think there's various simd operations for things like clamp and so on but again, maybe we'll explore that later on. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's work with uh, this much here. Is it compiling? Oops, maybe there's another mistake here. What mistake have we made here? Let's see here. U int max here. Oh, I guess it might just want... Ah, it's just having a um, problem deducing the type here. Now, I wonder if I use... Uh, let's use the actual uh, types here. U int... Uh, uh, int 8 t. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can deduce uh, 0 correctly. Uh, I think I have to use u int 8 min. Let's see if that uh, did it here. Oh, u int 8 min is not syntax highlighting here, but let's see. Uh, oh, int 8 min. Maybe I just have to make this uh, unsigned here. Uh, zero u something like that. Let's see if it's a little bit happier. Nope. Nope. I guess we're just going to use zero and two fifty five then. <laughs> that's that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and it's still complaining about. Let's see. Well, we've still got a little bit of a problem here. We've got to look through these error messages now, and see. Okay, I've got this clamp here. Now it's pointing to const here. Hmm. Okay. Um. So. Let's just see if I can run this function here. I mean, I could run it and it's not going to do anything, right? We discovered that earlier when we just ran our clamp 
uh, function. It's not going to modify the value. Um, and oh, we might have to scroll a little bit higher here uh, just to uncover what the error is going to be here. Uh, let's see here. No matching function. Oops, let's see here. Let's scroll all the way to the top of our where we compiled. Here we go. Uh, it says in our function cleanup error, no matching function for call to uh, clamp with unsigned char uh, type here. Okay, so it's uh, not happy, it appears, with these uh, types here. So, I mean, let's kind of play around with this just a little bit here. Let's say, okay, if I'm just using ints, is that going to make it uh, happy? Uh, okay, so that seems a little bit better. Um, now, why exactly... It's not happy there. It's a little bit of a mystery here, right? I should be able to maybe use these fixed with types here. Maybe it doesn't like it for some reason. I'm actually curious if we try this out with uh, Clang. Let's see if Clang's a little bit better here. Uh, oops, I don't have a newer version of Clang here, but I can do C++ 17 uh, above. There we go here. Let's see. No matching function. Okay, guess it just doesn't uh, like it <laughs> as much. Just a little bit more picky. Um, this should, I feel, be able to work with. But if you run into some of these errors here, okay, fine. We're just going to work with uh, integers here. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and uh, see that we finally get this function working. Okay, so it's working. Uh, so let's continue onwards with our experiment. And basically what I'm going to do here is create a vector here. Uh, v, I'll call it, and I'm going to pass it in a bunch of random values. Now, these could be values that, for instance, that you've taken with like a camera, you've run through some filters to brighten the image, and you just end up with, you know, random values, uh, 4112, 244, 96, negative 5, 97, and so on, okay? Um, so we need to make a little bit of a, a decision here with our function here. So again, I can call cleanup here and I can pass in our vector V and we could go ahead and, you know, just for debugging purposes, print out data at I and maybe add a new line here just to go ahead and run this. And we can see that we're getting, you know, cleaned up values that are within a range of zero and 255. So super handy, super helpful to do this. We do need to think about if we want this to create a side effect or not, meaning a copy. Right, in the same way that we had to, uh, you know, make sure that we're storing the result of this somewhere, this clamp function. Okay, once we wrestled with the type a little bit um, somewhere here. Um, so what I'm going to do for the purpose of this here, what I probably want to do in a pipeline here, again, maybe not guaranteed, is I want to create a vector of the same type here. Now, anytime that I'm doing this type of thing here, we kind of want to ensure that the types match, or at least, you know, I'm starting to think a little bit more generic uh, programming here. Um, so I probably do want to make this a function template. Again, I'm adding this because, um, you know, a little bit just as review of other things that we've learned in this series here. Uh, but let's go ahead and return our uh, result here. And um, again, little optimization things we could do. Our result, uh, we probably want to reserve for however big our data is, right? We know exactly how large the collection is going to be that we're writing to. And then I can just uh, do our results here. Um, so anyway, it's just a little bit more efficient there. And then let's actually return our uh, resulting vector, which is also going to be part of the return type here. Okay, standard vector of T. And um, since we're basically doing the copy ourselves manually there's no reason to copy this vector again so i want to pass it in uh by reference here um and i want it to be read only here okay so let's go ahead and uh what i want to do here let's first just compile it make sure it works here um and we're not using our return type here so let's actually actually let's do one step there vector uh Let's see, let's just call this cleaned. And I want to see if C++ is smart enough to figure out that type here. Uh, I think it will be. Yep, so it works here. Um, and then let's actually, in a range-based for loop now here, let's go ahead and do auto for each of the elements here in our uh, clean vector. Let's just go ahead and write those out to a uh, new line here. Okay. 
Uh, oops, let me make sure that I save here. And then go ahead and run this. Let's see, do we get everything? Oops. Let's make one final little modification here. Um, I guess it's not... Uh, we should push back the elements here. Uh, result, push back. There we go. Uh, that should do the trick for us to actually uh, modify the position. I guess it... Um, Always a little uh, trick case there. But now we have things uh, up and working here. Okay. Uh, so again, what did we do here? Uh, I started wrapping in a few other things here. Again, I like to sometimes overlap with our previous C++ lessons in these series. Again, if the template stuff's too much for you, just return a vector uh, of int here or work with a vector of int. That's totally possible. Uh, but anyways, um, just to clean this up a little bit, I'll get rid of our prior example. And basically what we did was we created some data here for some vector. And then we ran this cleanup function here. And this, this cleanup function here is smart enough to deduce the type. In fact, we could just get, uh, you know, we could get away with auto if we wanted here, if this was some sort of uh, type here. But we pass in V here, our original data, which for some reason, you know, we might not want to modify, right, if we're building some sort of pipeline. Pass it in by reference so it's efficient and not making a copy of the data that we're passing in. We allocate uh, for our result here to give us a little bit of performance here. And it's even worth, let's see if it did that um, allocation properly. If I do capacity here, okay, just so we can see that here. Uh, whoops, uh, let's see, what did I type out for wrong? Missing parentheses here. There we go. Um, it is giving us a capacity of six here, which I have. One, two, three, four, five, six elements here. Okay, so it is doing the right thing there. Great, we'll get rid of that. Um, but then we just loop through our data here, uh, clamped each of the values here, which we return and push back into our result. And then we ultimately return our resulting uh, vector here. Okay. Um, alrighty. And uh, then we just iterated through our data so we could actually see it cleaned up between the range of zero and 255. So a couple, you know, nice little spots here for us to think about our C++, review a lot of different things here. Um, because again, clamped is one of those, um, you know, you look at this signature and if you haven't done a lot of C++, or even if you have, sometimes you get tripped up here. Again, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe folks can comment why uh, that U int uh, A type wasn't working. I feel like it should have, but um, anyways, um, that should, uh, well, that should just about wrap us up here. Alrighty, folks. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. And if you're enjoying these lessons, you can again track your progress on the courses.mshaw.io website here. They've got the C++ programming language here. And if you're just starting out and want a beginner course, I've got another course here that helps you build a project and learn some C++ along the way if you'd like to see it applied. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention as always. Uh, if you know how to fix that little uint 8 uh, t bug, um, I, I think it should work. But again, maybe you can just write your own function for that case. Uh, or maybe I was doing something silly and just missed it on this video. But anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this. And again, hopefully you had fun learning another algorithm. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.